Wheaties presents Dimension X. Adventures in time and space. Transcribed in future tense. Dimension X. On stage tonight, Dimension X. Another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. If you're a mother or a father with a warm spot in your heart for pink-cheeked, happy-eyed youngsters, here's something you should know. Good food builds good health, and Wheaties are good food. Now, I don't know what you've been doing about breakfast for the kids, but did you know that every Wheaties flake is a kernel of wheat with the sunny, wholehearted goodness of field-grown wheat in every flake, with the full strength of whole wheat vitamins, minerals, proteins in every flake? Well, it's true. Whole wheat in all its richness. That's what you furnish when you fill the cereal bowl with Wheaties. But don't slip up. See that they get Wheaties. Crisp, sunshiny, good. Pour on the milk, put on the fruit, and know the youngsters are getting all that whole wheat can give. Do that now. Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Now, tonight's adventure into the unknown, into the world of Dimension X. Somewhere in Europe, a man is walking through the darkness down a cobblestone street. It's early evening still, only a little past eight, but the street is strangely deserted. He pauses looks behind him, then knocks quietly on a door. Yes? Is Engineer Wensler in? Uh, What is it, please? Mrs. Wensler? Yes. I'm selling brushes. We have a nice line of brooms. They sweep well. Do they sweep the little or the large? Both. They're especially fine for the large. Come in. Uh, cell are you in? I'm not with the underground. I'm an American. Newspaper correspondent. It's all right. Chief Nine said I should see your husband. He gave me the password. Look, you know the Americans are on your side. Well, I don't know. My husband is not home at the moment. If I... Eva, who is it? Uh, Someone to see Alan, father. My father-in-law knows nothing. Don't see anything which might disturb him. Okay. Uh, You wish to see my son, Mr... Uh, Uh, Arnold. uh... Yes, a friend asked me to look him up. Uh, Mr. Arnold is an American correspondent, Father. Oh, an American. It is not often I have had the chance to talk to an American these days. Things have changed, haven't they? Yes. These last few years, we have been out of touch with the world. Um, I was working in my laboratory, Mr. Arnold. Would you care to come in while you wait for my son? Father... Not the laboratory. Uh, Eva, we cannot ask our guest to sit alone in the library. And besides, I, I would like to talk. Huh? <laughs> this way, please. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Arnold, I know nothing of politics. My only interest is science. Uh, come, I, I will show you what we are doing. A most interesting experiment. Really, very interesting. Uh, oh, oh, no. Oh, this is Dr. Erickson, my associate. Dr. Erickson, Mr. Arnold. Uh, an American. Yes. Dr. Wensler, is it advisable to allow strangers in the laboratory? Oh, Mr. Arnold, it's my son's friend. Dr. Wensler, you will recall that the last directive... It has no bearing on the work we are doing. Our experiment is in the field of pure science. It has no military application. But the directive said... Dr. uh, uh... Erickson... May I remind you that I am still in charge of this laboratory? Oh, very well. If you will excuse me, I want to test the new diatomic at I will do that. Sorry, Dr. Wensler. I'm afraid your friend Erickson doesn't like my looks. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's not that. It's, it's just that he is worried. He's worried for me. Afraid that someone will misinterpret your visit and report me to the authorities. <laughs> He's my most loyal and trusted assistant. But he tends to exaggerate the danger. <laughs> well, I hope you're right, Doctor. Say, this is some setup you've got here. Huh? That uh, ten-foot plastic cylinder, what's that for? 
every experiment must have a focal point, and that transparent cylinder is ours. Mm -hmm. The objects upon which we wish to work are placed inside and brought under the catalyzed beam over here. Eva! That's Alan now. Uh, excuse me, I go and tell him. Uh, what is this experiment you're working on, Dr. Wenzel? Ah, a very interesting new problem. Eh? Uh, you say you're not a physicist or engineer, Mr. Arnold? No, I'm not, but I can follow you, if that's what you mean. Yes. Uh, well, you have been working with the problem of subatomic particles. Now, in attempting to manipulate them, to bring them closer to each other, we have discovered that we can shrink objects, reduce them in size. Well, that's very interesting. Uh -huh. How much can you reduce them? Half size? Oh, much more. We can make objects become microscopic and still retain their characteristics. Doesn't seem possible. We can make them even smaller, much smaller. Theoretically, in fact, down to atomic dimensions. Well, as I said before, I'm no expert, Dr. Winslow, but tell me, what's the point? What good does it do to shrink anything down to that size? You do not understand. Man has never actually seen an atom. But if we can reduce a camera and recording instruments to the atom size, then we would know the secrets of the universe. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you are, Mr. Arnold. Oh, uh, oh uh, yeah. hello, Alan. Uh, you can't be interested in this. Why don't we go into the study and talk? Uh, but Mr. Arnold is interested. Uh, well, sir, maybe I'd better talk to Alan at that. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Wensler. Yeah. I'm meaning to ask you if you think you can get along without me for a few minutes. There's something I must do. It's important. I uh, would... Yes, yes, yes. As yes. so long as it will not take too much time. No, no, it fine, won't take sir. me long. It has been a pleasure, Mr. Arnold. Uh, I shall see you soon, I hope. Yeah, sure. Okay, Alan, let's go talk. <laughs> Your credentials seem to be in order, Mr. Arnold. I talked to our chief after Ava explained why you were here. I don't agree with him, uh, but, Look, uh, Alan, you think the chief of your cell would have let me come here if he didn't think I was trustworthy and could help? I know, but... Public opinion can't be marshaled overnight, you know. Not even in America. Suppose the revolution is successful. It will be. All right, your only chance to make it stick will be in recognition by our government. And immediate help. Now, my stories can do a lot to lay the foundation for that. And with the date of the uprising so near... You know too much, Mr. Arnold, if this should leak to the secret police. Now don't worry about us. It's my neck as much as yours. Hmm. What do you think, Eva? Chief Nine said he was to be given the fullest cooperation. Very well, then. What do you want to know? Question one. What makes you think this revolution really has a chance? You can't fight tanks and guns with just your bare hands. Mr. Arnold, we believe the Wensler machine can solve our biggest problem. What's that? How to collect arms without being attacked by the secret police. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. Now, suppose we could reduce all our equipment. Electronic guns, ray gas, anti-tank blaster. Anything which could be brought in unassembled. Reduce it to so small a size that a woman's handbag could hold enough to equip a regiment. You see what that would mean? Yeah, sure. No one would think of looking for a cannon and... Precisely. But Father's machine and the cylinder were necessary for the reduction. That's why our supply depot is right here. Here? Yes. When the day arrives, we'll enlarge the arms and pass them out. Yes, but where's the stuff now? Eva, yeah. please get me that uh, model from the mantel. Oh, of course. Here you are. Take a look at this, Mr. Arnold. Well, that's a... That's a model of an anti-tank blaster, complete to every detail. Not a model, Mr. Arnold. This is an anti-tank gun, reduced in the cylinder by the Wensler process. At the proper time, we shall enlarge it, reel it out through the garage, and set it up. When the men assemble, we pass out the rest of the arms, and we have our revolution. A division of men, properly armed, can take the city. Uh, let's get back to the laboratory. Father will think it odd that we have been gone so long. <laughs> I was wondering where you were, Alan. I don't know what's keeping Erickson. He should have been back long ago. I need some help on this circuit Of here. course, Father. What are you doing? Uh, Erickson, I have amplified the effect by putting another diatomic catalyzer into phase. I want to give it a test run, Alan. If you will bring one of the animals from the cage. Yes, Father. Animals? Yes. We are experimenting now with the reduction of living animals, guinea pigs. How does it work? Those we diminish to microscopic size return unharmed. 
But those sent down to the atomic dimension, yeah. the cylinder returns. But there's nothing inside, nothing. So, Dr. Winslow, have you ever tried it on a human being? I have tried to persuade Father to send me down to find out what's making the animals vanish. No, Alan. But, Father, we've installed high-frequency radio communication now. If anything started to go wrong with me, I could tell you in time to reverse the process. No, I will never permit it. All right. Guinea pigs it is, then. But someday, Father, I... Yes, dear? Come to the window. What is it? That man, the one in the raincoat. He has been standing in that doorway across the street ever since I looked out the window. What of it? I don't like it, Alan. He has been standing there just looking at our house. Oh? Alan, do you think it is? I don't know. I'm not sure. Eva? Yes? You know what we planned in this eventuality. Yes. Get the arms and the provisions. We can't afford to take a chance. All right, Alan. No, what is it, my son? What is... Father, it's better for you not to know too much, but I'm a member of the underground. No. Ava, too. We have... No. Well, we have some contraband hidden in the house. We'll have to put it in the cylinder. Contraband? What do you mean? Arms, Father. Arms and provisions for an army reduced to one fortieth size. Alan. Yes, we must put them in the cylinder and warm up the machine. If it is the secret police, we'll make the arms invisible, microscopic in size. Can I help? If you wish, Mr. Arnold, you can help my wife get the supplies. Okay. Alan! What is it, Ava? Two police cars are just down the corner. They're full of men. That changes matters. Father, you'll have to operate the machine yourself. Ava and I are getting into the cylinder. No, Alan, you can't. It's, it's too dangerous. It's Alan. the only way, Father. Those are the secret police. <laughs> Dimension X will continue in just a moment. Tomorrow morning, get up and get at them with Wheaties to help. Now, does that sound as if I just made it up? Well, listen, folks, it's real. It's so. If you'll pour the Wheaties into a bowl tomorrow morning, if you'll pour on cold milk and put on the fruit you like best, if you'll do these things, you can honestly feel a difference all morning long. And here's why. Every golden Wheaties flake, every flake, is made from a grain of wheat. That's why every flake of Wheaties gives you full whole wheat vitamins and minerals and the amazing energy you'll notice still with you by 11 in the morning. You simply cannot miss because it's a fact. You do better by yourself on a better breakfast. Whatever your job, if you'll start the morning with a reasonable meal, you should find yourself working better, feeling better, even looking better all morning long. Yep. 7 o'clock Wheaties, 11 o'clock, still feeling good and working happy. You try it now. Not somebody else, but you. You may be pounding a rug or pounding a typewriter tomorrow morning at 11. You may be driving a tractor or driving a bargain. But you're going to feel the difference with breakfast of champions tucked inside. You try it. Really now. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Catalyzer ready? Ready. Set at point 034. Good. All right, Ava. Get in the cylinder. <laughs> Alan, I can't let you take the chance, Alan. Isn't it enough to make the supplies disappear? Not for the secret police. They must know something, otherwise they wouldn't be here. But how could they prove anything? No, I... Father. Every man has his breaking point, and I can't afford to gamble with the lives of others. I don't know how I'd react on the torture. Torture? Oh, Father, you are naive, but don't worry, you'll be safe. Everyone knows you aren't interested in politics. And Mr. Arnold is an American. Perhaps that will protect him. They're coming now. Oh, my son, what, what have you done? There's no time for recriminations oh. now, Father. I'm getting in with Ava. Arnold, will you help my father with the machine and after? Yes, I'll do whatever I can. Thank you. Now, take us down to sub-microscopic size. Yes. Hold us down until the police have gone. Tell them we've left. They won't dare meddle with the machine. Tell them, tell them it will mean death to anyone who gets in the way of the beam. When they're gone, bring us back up. I'll maintain radio silence until I hear from you. Very well, my son. There they are. The machine's warmed up. Move over, Ava. I'm coming in. Let, let me in. Let's see. I've switched on the radio. If you can hear me, secure the porthole, Arnold. Okay, we hear you. 
porthole secure. Ready, Father? Yes. Are the oxygen then tanks all right? Ava? Yes. They're breaking down the door. The atomic setting 034. Preliminary release. Temperature? 27 degrees centigrade. 760 millimeters pressure. Hurry, Father. Very well. No. Break on. Alpha 4, beta 16, gamma 0.12, temperature 30 centigrade, pressure 1100. Be careful. Holy mackerel, the cylinder's only three feet high. Oh. Open that door, boss. Temperature 36, pressure 1800. It's getting too high. I can't do it. Stand by to reverse. No. The temperature and pressure show signs of stabilizing. Now 38 and 2000. Make setting at Angstrom 5, 10 times to the third. That's a small... We can't afford to take chances. Only three inches high. It's all right, Father. Temperature and pressure beginning to drop. Thank God. A half inch high. Oh, they are coming. They are coming. Good night, Father. God Goodbye, bless you. Son. If anything happens, it isn't your fault. Remember, this is my doing. Ava, switch off. Yes, Anton. Yes, sir. Speak of men. Yes, come on. Stop. Yes, Don't come. Come near the beam. Ah. No, this machine is in operation and can kill anyone coming within range. Shut off that machine. The, the machine cannot be shut off until it reaches Nadir. A sudden reversal would cause an explosion and take us all with it. You there. Who are you? Who, me? Just a friend of the family. Arrest him? Now, get your hands off me. Let go of me. Now, Dr. Wensler, your son and his wife... Where are they? Answer me, you old fool. They, they... they left a few minutes before you came. Left? Jan, I told you to watch all the exits. We did, Commander. Mouse could not have escaped. I swear it by the leader. But they are not here. You. What do you know of this? I told you they left some time ago. Keep an eye on them. And keep away from that machine. Jan. Yes, sir. Send out a general alarm. Yes, Commander. Dr. Wensler, yes. who are your son's friends? Please, please. Commander, let me finish my experiment. I, I know nothing about my son's activities or his friends. I swear it. I know nothing about politics. So? I must stay here until this experiment is finished. It is too dangerous to be left unattended. Very well. I'll take the American to headquarters. The rest of you... Search the house. Look here, I'm an American citizen. I demand... Erickson! Yes, my dear Wensler. Have you found them, Commander? Erickson. You have betrayed me. I am a member of the League of Loyal Scientists. Your oh. son is the traitor, not I. Uh, have you found him, Commander? No. We have searched the house. Nothing. They swear the son and his wife escaped before we arrived. That is ridiculous. They were here when I left. People do not vanish into thin air. Then where are they? Right, right under your nose, Commander. What? They're in the cylinder, of course, under the beam there. That is the only place it could be. Allow me to handle the controls. You shall have your prisoners in five minutes. I see. Very clever, Dr. Wensler. Very clever. All right, Erickson. You take charge of the machine. You spy, you traitor. Don't let you... him touch that dial. Oh, Grab him. You, 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 you. There. He has set it for subatomic dimension. What does that mean? Whatever is in that cylinder has become as small as the atom. Then shut it off! It has almost reached nadir. We must wait ten seconds, then reverse polarities. The machine has reached nadir. Angstrom ten to the minus eleven. We must now wait ten seconds. One, two, three, four... What's the matter, Alan? I don't know. Something must have gone wrong. Alan, Alan, look out there. Why? Why, it's the solar system. It's coming at us so fast. Look. The sun? No, that can't be. Eva! That's the nucleus of an atom. We've reached the subatomic dimension. That sun is the nucleus. And those planets are the electrons revolving about it. And that planet coming up at us. 
There on the other side of the sun. I mean the nucleus. It's... Uh... An electron. It's growing in size. We're heading straight for it. They're coming down on it. They are going to land. I guess we finally reached the Navy. We haven't shrunk for the past two or three hours. Where are we? I don't know. Somewhere in a valley between the mountains of a huge electronic range. It's almost funny, resting on the surface of, of an electron. Look. The soil under the floor of the cylinder. It looks like vegetation. Yes. Moss. Like it. That's the last of the air. I've been expecting it to go out for the past two days. We have, perhaps, a half hour more. Eva, dearest. I know. There is one chance. That vegetation, that means there must be some sort of atmosphere on this electronic planet. We have to take that chance. Eva, are you willing to step out of the cylinder with me? Of course, my dearest. For whither thou goest, I will go. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. When thou diest, I will <laughs> We haven't much time. Ready? Ready. All right. Open the portal. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, ten seconds. I shall now reverse polarity. I, I see something. The cylinder? Yes, there it is. Just a few seconds more and it will become normal size. A foot high. Keep that man quiet. Ah, it grows very rapidly. Yes. Three feet high. Four. Now, there you are, Commander. And in a moment, you will see your prisoners. Get the door open. Yes, sir. There is no door, my Commander. No door? Erickson... But there must be. No, sir. Nothing but a gas valve. You are right. Nothing but violet gas. Well, that's, that's impossible. Where are your son and his wife? We told you they left the house some time ago. That is a lie. Where are they? I... I do not know. Erickson, open that valve. But the gas may be poisonous. We shall see. Open the valve. Very slightly. What is that? I... I don't know. I, I seem to hear music inside my head. So did I. Apparently the gas produces auditory hallucinations. Open the valve again. Careful. We, the people of peace, greet the great scientist, the omnipotent, the maker of all. I, I thought I had a voice. So this did I. is the law of our people, laid down by our first father ten million years ago. That always and ever there be this record of our race. For it is told that thou, in the fruitfulness of time, shall take back unto thee this ark, like unto that cylinder in which the first father and mother of us all came unto us. I, I don't understand. I am the last of our race, and the sun is cold and desolation is upon the face of our planet. But in our time there was majesty and joy and the gleaning of the fruits of the soil, for we have been the people of peace and life was bountiful for generations until that day came when in thy everlasting wisdom thou didst decree the end of all. Though there were some who wept, we did not query why. For we have been a happy race, 
We have followed the law of the first father, Alan, <sighs> and of the great mother, Ava. No. And we have builded this ark so that there may be a report of our deeds and of the fulfillment of the trust. Now I, Lamarian, the last of the billions who lived here, do lie me down into that last sleep, from which, if thou will, I shall awake unto the land which is thine. Hail, O great one, from the descendants of Alan and Ava, Hail and farewell. Good Lord, what was that? And the neighbor, Dr. Wensler, where are they? They are beyond your reach. What do you mean? Don't you understand? All time is relative. One year of our time is one revolution of the planet Earth about the sun. Somewhere down in the microcosmos, my son and his wife found themselves in in an atomic universe. Uh, of course. And landed upon an electronic planet. That planet whirled around its sun, the nucleus of an atom, a million times in the space of a second, our second. Dr. Wensley, what are you trying to say? That voice we heard is the voice of a human being, the last member of a race whose blood is mine. For in the space of 10 seconds of our time, Alan and Ava settled upon their microcosmic planet and bore sons and daughters and a great and peaceful race that lived and died beyond infinity. And my children, Alan and Ava, who founded that race, are dead and gone. Ten million years ago. Ten seconds ago. Tonight, Dimension X has presented Beyond Infinity, an original radio drama written by Pierre Gerson. Featured in the cast were Les Damon as Arnold, Lotta Stavitsky as Ava, E.A. Krumschmidt as Dr. Wensler, and Joe DeSantis as Alan Wensler. Your narrator was Norman Rose. Music by Albert Berman. Dimension X is produced by Van Woodward and directed by Edward King. In a moment, we'll tell you about next week's show. And now, here is your Wheaties man, Frank Martin. This is Ed Prentice batting for Frank Martin to bring you a word from a fellow most of you know. Lucius, would you step over here, please? You bet, Ed. Folks, I'm Lou Kaplan. I've been playing shortstop for the Chicago White Sox practically forever. Yes, it is practically forever. This makes your 20th season, Luke. Do you think it's going to be a permanent job? <laughs> well, you know, Ed, I play baseball like I eat Wheaties. Just get set and plow right through. Wheaties and baseball just seem to go together. The Wheaties give me the energy to play more baseball, and a tough game gives me the appetite to eat more Wheaties. I think it's a real nice arrangement. Well, Mr. Appling, if you're happy, so are we. Thanks a million to our real Wheaties champion, Luke Apley. And folks, if you haven't had the pleasure of Wheaties lately, have some tomorrow. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. And eat happy. Next week, a strange story of other worlds. The story of the barbaric potters of thirst. Another adventure into the unknown world of tomorrow. The world of... Dimension X. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen tomorrow night to Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. This program was transcribed. Stay tuned for Stories of the Underworld by Jack Late on NBC.